All right, we're recording another episode of Them's Fighting Words here. Dominic Izzo out of Chicago. Hope you guys are doing well. You guys have wanted this one for a long time. Hell, I've wanted this one for a long time. We have sitting in with us today, Sifu Kevin Lee. Holy shit, dude. I'm so excited to have you on. I mean, this is uh, it's awesome. Um, wow. Thank you, man. Thank you for, for doing this today. How are you? I'm great. It's an honor to be here, by the way. So it's an thank honor you so to much. have you. What are you talking about? Um, all right, so let's we gotta go right into this. Kevin Lee. That's that's who we're talking to today. We need the thirty thousand degree uh, uh view of who is Kevin Lee. So let's start there. <laughs> Let's talk about Kevin Lee. We're going to talk about the martial artist. I'm going to give Kevin Lee my critique. I'm going to give Kevin Lee my praises for him, all this. But first, we need to establish who Kevin Lee is, and uh, we're going to just have some fun with it. Sounds good. Who are you, Kevin? Tell everybody so, who you uh, are. Oh, man. Where did I start? Uh, I was born and raised in Taiwan. Uh, I started martial art training at the age of around seven. Uh, it was first my dad's idea. He wanted me to train martial arts, so he put me into like an after-school activity. And in Taiwan, we have a lot of like uh, school clubs, so he wanted me to join like a, like a kung fu club, so I could start training uh, martial arts. And my dad was a martial artist himself, so the way he punished me as a kid is having me do a squat, holding a bamboo stick in my arms straight like this, and that was basically my punishment as a kid. <laughs> um, and I started with Taekwondo and, and Kung Fu. And later on, I did uh, Aikido for like a year. Uh, that's before I moved to America. At the age of around 12, 12 years old, I moved to United States. And I continued with my Taekwondo training until 16. And that's when I met Sifu Francis. And I started training with him when I was like a junior hmm. in high school. Okay, I got to ask, how old are you? Right now, 36. Oh, do you... <laughs> Yeah, you look a lot younger, man. So good for you. I want to <laughs> ask you. something. I kind of want to start there. Um, okay. The the diff we see a lot of uh, like every now and then you'll see the, the the it's always a different country. It's not Americans. My view has always been, and I guess we'll just try to dive into this because we both do Wing Chun. We mm -hmm. know that one of the biggest misunderstandings is the application, the usefulness, uh, and how effective mm -hmm. Wing Chun is. What you just described about how did your dad air quote, punished you. That's discipline. That's training. We don't yep. do that in America, right? I, I'll never forget, we went to, I was a, a kid, I was probably 10 years old, and my mother took me to a Shotokan karate class that uh, she wanted to enroll me in, and she took one look at how you know the sensei was, and she's like, no, I don't want him to go in there, which was like, mm -hmm. you're Italian. You you beat me with a wooden spoon. You're worried about this guy yelling at me? And then, yeah. then I ultimately, like two years later, I got involved <laughs> with wrestling, but do you think that one of the fundamental uh, misconceptions why Wing Chun is so effective is because Americans are just inherently lazy and we don't dedicate ourselves to the study of something? Uh, I think that could be a part of a, a reason because I think the discipline culture is very different uh, and unique in Asian countries. Uh, and of course, uh, the way we train was a lot harder and dedicated. Well, I'm not saying that the Americans don't train hard. I just say that the there is a culture difference, at least during my time period. Like, for example, the way we study is in the classroom setting, we supposed to be putting both hands on the desk and my body is straight. We're not allowed to do this. And the moment you do this, Back then, the teachers are allowed to punish you for that. Mm. So we were supposed to sit straight and eyes forward and keep your head up like this. And then when you're right, you just look down. But you're not supposed to, like, lean. But that was a lot strict back then. Now it's a little different. But at least my, more for my time period, that was the way we're supposed to behave in the class. There is, like, a standard of behavior that we're supposed to follow. Um, it's not a rule, but it's just, like, kind of show respect, you know, be, be respectful to everybody. And of course, as far as martial arts training, I do feel like, at least in my time period, even when we were kids, every kid was so so much more behaved. Oh my gosh, you're 100 percent right. Yeah. Well, when you look at adults, like um, I and I, I you you're trained in so many different arts, it's ridiculous. That's why I wonder how much of a comparison you have. The with the rise of the MMA gym, 
for the most part, I would like to think that you any if you have a hundred people who go to an MMA gym, mm -hmm. or even a BJJ gym, uh, uh, they're there for the camaraderie, the exercise, the workout. It's a very, very, very small fraction of a percent of those who are actually looking to get involved in the fight game. When right. did 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 MMA do the did, did the MMA gym style do anything to hurt? the traditional style, meaning when people used to come to my school, you mm -hmm. know, it would, they got taught how I got taught your first several weeks. I'm sorry. You're going to be standing there and perfecting the center line punch. You're going to be, you're going to be burning this into muscle memory. Maybe you'll get the wall bag for a target, but after yeah. like two or three weeks of training, you get people going, Oh, I thought I was going to get more out of this. Well, it's because you're, you think you're going to go into an MMA gym and start hitting the pads right away. Did yeah. that style of gym, did that hurt traditional martial arts? Uh, in a way, I think that it, it, it does in a way because, and of course, we're talking about like the rise of UFC. There's like MMA people that love just the, the acts of MMA. It's like, well, why do I need to spend time to do the forms? But remember, everything comes with structure and form. Even in MMA, we're talking about just basic boxing. You still have to practice a jab and cross, and that's structure and form. So there are people that look specifically just for the combat sports. Where I look at it is you gotta pump, you have to polish your fundamentals and then understand your structure, and that can bring your game to a different level. But if you just go in there hitting pads without what you're doing, you can punch as hard as you want, and that doesn't mean it will be, it will be effective. I want to talk about um, why you again going back to your background with all the martial arts that you mm -hmm. feature. It seems that you favor i don't know if favor is the right word it seems that you favor wing chun the most is that is yes. that a fair tell me why yeah. why you're 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 not a you're not an exactly young guy but you're not an old guy either you do you <laughs> clearly you clearly know how to fight anybody who's seen your stuff um if if you and i i don't know how tall you are but i think we're about the same height if you and mm -hmm. i ever squared off 100 percent guarantee i'm going to give you the win because you're younger you're better conditioned uh and so i'm going to give that to you but why why are you? Oh, uh, no, I'll tell you right now. If Kevin Lee and I square off, Kevin's going to kick my ass. Uh, I'll give that to him right now. No, if I get um, my hands on Kevin's going to be a different story. Now, but that said, um, why did you, why Wing Chun? Why are you putting so much emphasis at when you're such a talented, very well in shape? You are built, you're quick, you've got, you've got every attribute a martial arts needs. Why are you wasting mm -hmm. your time with Wing Chun? Oh, man. Um, I don't know, like, I'm sure a lot of people watch, like, movies about Wing Chun. To me, Wing Chun is not just about all the different techniques. It's really about the, the concept and theory that it provides for me. Wing Chun will always be my core. It doesn't matter when I do jujitsu, when I do my clinch and uh, grappling for, for Muay Thai. And I use Wing Chun all the time. It's because, one, it provides the structure and understand the center line. Those are the two main things for me. It's not because, oh, maybe I know like 10 different techniques in Wing Chun, I'll be the master or like really good at fighting. To me, it's the principle. I understand the energy, the flow, the connectivity. And to me, that's the core, core concept of Wing Chun. And when I look at Jiu Jitsu, when I, even when I do grappling, everything's sticky hand. The guy trying to reach my color, I can control, I can monitor, I can make a frame. And like, this is structurally alignment. And this is something that we teach in Wing Chun. But a lot of times people say, yeah, just push the guy out. That's pure muscle. I'm trying not to use muscular force. So when I apply mechanical structure to my jujitsu again, it makes me a lot stronger. So I feel less tired, if that makes sense. 100% it does. Mm -hmm. You just, you summed up, and I'm going to ask, you just gave an answer that you're going to have to re-give because it, it's why people say, hey, so how come you don't see Wing Chun working in the MMA? You, you literally just answered that. I mean, people mm -hmm. don't get that you're applying the principles in there. And one of the best explanations I ever heard was, is somebody said years ago, well, have you ever gotten punched in the face by somebody? And I said, yeah, of course. And he goes, did you ever stop and ask him what style of punch that was? And I went, no. no. There you go. So Wing Chun lives in all things. Um, mm -hmm. You're part of the Francis Fong uh, Martial Arts Academy. I, mm -hmm. I, I, I think that uh, uh, Sifu Fong has some of the most brilliant – um, and this is not meant to be disrespectful because I'm going to get to a point. Some of the most brilliant, entertainful or entertaining Wing Chun out there that there's two avenues people can go. If you have no Wing Chun experience, 
you're going to dismiss it as, oh, that's all show and flash and whatever. If you're like me, you look at it and go, okay, he's wowing everybody. Kevin and, and, and yep. you know, the two of you are just wowing everybody. Then you're going to suck them in to really giving them the real Wing Chun. Can you explain to people who don't understand that although what you do online is Wing Chun, it's also not the depths of Wing Chun. Can you explain that a little bit? Yeah, uh, I might get hit with this, but uh, <laughs> there's so there's, mo- there's so much there's more of what you guys side. are doing. There, there's a marketing that we are running a business, right? For so for us, to me, I I did train, I, I did explore other Wing Chun instructor, but to me, Sifu is like by far one of the best. At least to me, I I, I can't speak for everybody else. But my Sifu, to me, is like, wow, he's the awareness of his body mechanics and energy. They're just incredible. So when I post video about Sifu, and of course, I'm picking things that the audience would like to see. If I'm picking something like, oh, he's showing the structure and showing like the detail of the technique, it's no one's going to watch it. And I did that before. So it's like, oh, I had to pick what helps the academy to bring students. And then they see the actual Wing Chun and they'll stick to it. And that's kind of like what I'm trying to do. So what you see online, it may be just the tiny little bit what Sifu actually does, because he doesn't do trapping all the time. It's just something I'm picking, oh, fast paced, a little flashy, people like it. But every once in a while, I'll insert maybe a five second clip of he actually explaining the detail of the structure, but it's very, very brief. So that's the um, sort of the social media internet side. But if you ever attend like seminars with Sifu Francis, he's, Honest standing of a body awareness is just incredible. Like I grab all of them and I've trained jujitsu for 15 years and I, I can barely touch him, like dominate his position. He just, his body just flows so well and controls my body with his arms and legs. I don't know how, how I've been it, telling honestly. people for years, you know, I, I started as a wrestler and I found Wing Chun by accident and I fell in love with it because I went, it's stand up grappling. It literally teaches you how to deal with people like me. What, yeah. what really impressed me, with uh, you and Sifu Fong was um, I'm, I'm coming across videos and I, I had taken a big, long, like five year break from doing any Wing Chun. I was just so burnt out with mm. it, burnt out with the politics. I come back to YouTube and then this Kevin Lee's just exploded all over YouTube. And I'm like, who is this kid? So I'm watching your stuff and I'm watching Sifu Fong and I'm like, oh, they're legitimate there. And what really got it to me, what people didn't see is the subtle. And I've talked about this before you were doing, he was doing a, a, a trapping demonstration where he did a collective pox out on you. He pox out mm-hmm. like your, your lower tonsil and you came up off your heels onto your toes. Yes. And I went, Holy shit. People don't get that. I, it, it blows me away how that to me was real energy that if you know what you're looking for, you see it. It's like, okay, here's Kevin. Who's rooted. You can't, you can't be a grappler like you are and not have mm-hmm. root. So if you're rooted and all he did was a pox out that collected your energy at the wrist and it affected the rest of your core to get you yeah. up off of your heels, I went, oh, no, these guys know exactly what they're doing. And yeah. that's where I wish um, more people paid attention to Wing Chun and mm-hmm. were patient in our culture because they would see that, all you got to do is touch hands like with someone like you or uh, 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 a Sifu Fong and go, there is so much more to this art than Chi Sao and a Pak Da drill. Um, do you ever, when you, and, and I kind of want to transition into the you working with the other guys out there like um, Icy Mike and everybody else, yeah. have you ever changed their mind on like Wing Chun, have they ever sit there and said, "Oh shit, this is legitimate," uh, because uh, uh, because you're able to show them what's not being shown on YouTube? Yeah, um, we talked about this before, and then um, I, I think I did change like I see Mike's like concept about oh Wing Chun's different, but I think he, he's he's also very open minded. He's not very close. He's not close minded. So with the way he looks at it is oh just like stand up grappling. I'm like you're hundred percent correct. It can be stand up grappling if you know how to apply it properly. So to me, everything's just understand the structure and principle. And like you mentioned earlier, it's like Sifu breaks your balance. Every time he does a technique, the first thing he does is always affect the way you move. So now you're off balance, he can do whatever he wants. Mm-hmm. But if he doesn't affect your balance, nothing's gonna work well. Um, the future. Uh, 
do you see or have you seen, because I'm starting to see this a little bit, but you're more mm-hmm. in the game of uh, school, it's your profession, all that. Traditional arts really kind of were just shunt to the wayside when MMA and the UFC came out. Nobody had any value in it. Uh, mm-hmm. we've see, we saw in the opening USC that Brazilian jiu-jitsu dominated. Now it's become a combination of grappling, boxing, and kickboxing. Do you see those, because MMA has become its own style, do you see, mm-hmm. like, maybe in the next few years or whatever, if there's, like, Kevin Lee. Kevin Lee decides all of a sudden, man, you know what? Before I'm 40, I want to go do MMA, and I want to dominate the UFC. Do you think <laughs> that there are going to be men like you who will dominate um, in the UFC because you're not just limited to boxing, kickboxing, and grappling, but, yeah, you're a, a Wing Chun expert or you're an Aikido expert. You've got so many other skill mm-hmm. sets. Will traditional martial arts start to make more of an impact in MMA. Do you have you ever thought I think of that? So. I think so. Um, I have coaches that already implement Wing Chun and Filipino martial arts principles into UFC. So I have two coaches that teach UFC fighters. One is you might know uh, Eric Paulson. Yeah. Coach Eric and then coach Greg Nelson. And these two are like definitely my my number one go to when I t- when I talk about MMA. And when I first started doing MMA, it was actually Greg Nelson, like Arjun Greg Nelson. He taught me how to apply principle Wing Chun into grappling MMA. And he's trained five different UFC champions before, including like the late uh, uh, Rose, mm. Doug Rose. He trained Doug Rose. But most of the time he, he teaches, it's a principle of Chi Sao and Huba, which is basically sticking hand. Learning how to understanding how to apply them on the ground, standing and against a cage. And those are just pommelly using arm sticky arms elbows close quarter combats and when there are people that dedicated to understanding the principle i think they can be applied in most situations i think i i hope so too uh, i gotta ask you some uncomfortable questions right um okay. G Kundo, everybody knows that i'm not a fan of it i'm very black and white <laughs> on it so here's you you are you're the epitome of it though right you're trained in, in so many different arts why mm-hmm. did you, why did you just not take fractions from uh, Wing Chun and then just go into something else and form a hodgepodge? Why do you know the full Wing Chun curriculum and then that's your base, that's your pride? Why are you so in love with uh, with, with with Wing Chun when clearly Bruce Lee told us to just take bits and pieces of it and go make it our own? Why 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 did you not go that route? So I did. I I trained JKD. Well, we call it Jim Fang Kung Fu. Not because of Bruce Lee. I'm doing it because I love Guru Dan. Like Daniel Santo, like Guru Dan, my teacher. I, I, I know a lot of people may, maybe never met him, but to me, he's a very phenomenal teacher. He, he's like the person that opens door for you. Like I was first in, introduced to him by my Sifu, Sifu Francis. They're good friends. So Guru Dan is, he's at 86. Mm. He's so humble, but he like trains every day for at least four or five hours. Like he said, he does private lesson. He does different training. And to me, I love JKD because of the way he breaks down. He's not so-called the original or like the traditional JKD guys. He's allowing us to research and implement things that you may, you may never seen and start putting things together. And the best way he ever told me is like, imagine you go to a Chinese restaurant, right? And there's like, you open the menu, there's like at least hundred different dishes. You might like maybe two dish on the menu. I might like three different dishes on the menu, but at least you can select the things you like. And that to him was the concept of JKD. I'm teaching you 87, 86 different throws, but you might only like two or three so that you can be selective of what fits for your body and your need. And that's the reason why I choose JKD because I can take pieces of, oh, I like this part from wrestling. I like this part from jujitsu. I like this part from, you know, uh, Muay Thai. And then I add it to my core as a Wing Chun. But I still apply the same principle, but I just take different pieces of technique and then combine them together. And that becomes me. And that's how basically how I become the way I am today. I've always thought that it's, it, again, people think I, I hate Bruce Lee. I don't. I just think that he was limited in his life experience. Literally, he died at 32, 33 years old. Um, I'm 49 I don't. I look mm-hmm. back at the thirty-three-year-old me and went, "Oh my God, how much I would have evolved." I have always thought that Dan and Asanto has probably had more to do with the creation of JKD than Bruce Lee did, and I think it's an unpopular opinion with people. Um, I agree with you. 
It's good to know. What what's uh well, let's stick with him for a second. What has been one of your favorite conceptual lessons that you've learned from him? Cuz that's I mean, that's a that's a that's a, that's a life opportunity to get to train with him even at his age. What have you oh, yeah. what in I know a good teacher is when somebody um can make that light bulb go off within yourself. And I have no doubt that he's done that. What has been one of the greatest times that you've ever gone? Like you've had that wow. epiphany moment. So many, I, I don't even know how to pick, uh, because I do three different arts with them. I do JKD and I do c -Lot, and I do Kali. And even though they look different, but Gurus always find a way to combine kickboxing with weaponry and then into, uh, into like takedowns and stuff like that. So to me, that's like, when I first saw it, I was like, wow, at this age, he really moves well. Like he moves incredibly well. So I've always looked up to him like, I want to be like that when I get old. And again, I look at Sifu. Sifu is also like in the seventies, like late seventies, he moves faster than anybody I've mm -hmm. ever seen. So I have like the mentors I look up to. And so to me, it's always like the concept and knowledge to keep bringing, like Sifu, brings libel to me every single week. Sometimes it might be just my like, little bit of elbow like position and change the structure, my posture, my chest, my shoulder, everything matters. So when he corrects me on the tiny little detail, that's when my lipo goes, oh, I can apply that on the ground. Or, oh, I can apply this to grappling. Like last week he was showing me a control off inside him. And I, I immediately goes, oh, I can do that in grappling because that's the same position that I just need to change the angle. So there are moments like that that kind of sparks me. So to me, that's like like the golden nuggets I'm looking for, the tiny little detail that they show. Yeah, that's the and great similar, stuff. Yeah. That's the great stuff that mm -hmm. makes you look at, you could be doing Wing Chun for 20 years and all of a sudden go, oh my gosh, I've never seen that before because of what yeah. somebody else opens the doors for you. Um, mm -hmm. I'm going to talk about your YouTube journey. You, you are just, you know, it, when we first started YouTube uh, 12 years ago, uh, the big names were Master Wong was obviously one of them. I don't know if you've ever gotten to talk to him or met him. Um, I actually did a Zoom call with Master Wong 10 years ago. And, oh, wow. Uh, oh, he, I'm going to tell you, he is, he is exactly what we were talking about before. He shows one thing online, but everything he know uh, offline, I'm like, oh, my God, you 100% know Wing Chun. He was mm -hmm. brilliant. There was him. Uh, there was the Windy City Wing Chun channel, which, you know, I was elated, uh, like Ed and Ken are out of my era, area. And then there was Jin Young. Jin Young was yes. huge. Yes. Um, I got to meet him uh, 2013. He came and did a seminar with us. Super, super nice guy. But he kind of, uh, I think he kind, of, he kind of quieted down because of everything. I left Wing your YouTube for a while because of the politics. Uh, Kevin, you're one of the, like energy is huge in humans and you've got one of the best energies, vibrations, positivity out there. The internet is a shitty, dirty place. <laughs> How is. are you managing in a, in a world where people will look at you and go, Oh, Kevin, your elbow's wrong. Oh, you're not doing it right. And it's like, how do you of all people survive this with the size audience you have and you keep going? Do you let it get to you or, or how have you been so positive and you keep putting out great content? I think just the mentality of what I have, because I obviously I, I favor certain things and you might favor certain things, right? So we all, we're human, different human beings. So you might like things I don't like. I might like things you don't like, and that's okay. Cause it's a free country. You have your opinion. I have my opinion, but to me at the end of the day is I'm trying to share my passion. For me, it's the knowledge and passion that I believe is valuable to people. And I do care every one of my followers that, truly follows my contents and understanding what I'm trying to like provide. So as far as for the hater goes, I look at them as I, like, okay, it's okay. It doesn't bother me because at the end of the day, I don't see you. You don't see me. Why does it matter to me? It's uh, you, you're pretty damn impressive on that. Um, I want to <laughs> talk about our art a little bit more and then uh, go okay. some different directions. You, what has been something that, or has there been, has there been anything in your training in Wing Chun, if you do the forms daily, um, have you ever looked at something that you just didn't see like five or 10 years ago? Uh, like there, like there was a time when I, um, when I really, really, really discovered jump sow energy and how it really mm -hmm. connected with my core and, and how, and I'll, like just the, I'll never forget the day that after four years of training, like my, my root finally kicked in and I went, Oh my God, I see that. Has there been anything that Wing Chun has taught you 
Oh yeah. That you thought you already knew. Yep. Uh, first, it's always go back to the core, the core understanding of a core connection. And second is I discovered this maybe a couple of years ago. It's the way I move my chest, upper chest. So the way we usually look is, okay, you got to sink a little bit, right? But there's a lot of energy that kind of usually gets tied up right here. There's one time Steve would say, you're connecting too much with upper body. You're not connecting. You're not flowing your body connection. So we were just doing basic, really easy. We're going to put our hand like a foot out. And he really wanted me to connect my elbow across my hip. So instead of going straight down, he wants to think about crossing line. So he said, Kevin, think about crossing the elbow this way. But in your head, sink. Now my chest is doing this, but I'm still having my posture. So now all of a sudden he tried to push me. I felt a lot stronger. And I was like, oh, that's wild. And he goes, now think about connect your elbow to the same side of the hip. Then my body just starts to move back. That when he pushed me, I just kind of come off. So he said, you got cross. Think about crossing the connection. Make a cross, make an X. Now your energy sinks and then relax your upper body and let your shoulder rotate back and sink versus just doing this. There's the study that people don't get, they don't understand. And that's what we get from the opening movement of defining center fighting line from the Selim Dow form. I, yeah. I, I've done videos on this where it blew me away the more you study, right? Because people breeze through the first section of the first form when you're doing the Fuk Sao to Wu Sao section. And I, the rumor was always, well... Ip Man wanted to smoke opium so he would have his students down the rooftop doing that section for an hour. And people are saying, well, you develop elbow energy. And they don't understand what elbow energy. What you just mm -hmm. described, I've said it. There's something so incredible how when you're projecting a punch forward to hook your elbow up with your opposite hip. And then when yeah. you're pulling it back, hook up the same side hip. Where it got for me to be able to connect that the dots was when I was lifting weights. I could Ooh. not believe that when I adopted that into a bench press or a lat pull or a seated row, my hands were primary drivers. You put your hands on the bar, and it's a hooking motion if you pull, or it's just a, a, a bracing moment if you push. But if you drive from your elbow with your opposite hips, on, I yeah. could not believe the weight I was putting up. And I went, oh, my God, there's something massively legitimate to this. Yeah. What you just described is so powerful, but the typical American doesn't want to spend time learning a static form that's got 108 movements. To get to that point, they want to go slap the dummy, then go into MMA. <laughs> if you could, if you could kind of sell your case for people, what, how, how do you press upon people to get them to understand, no, the journey's going to take a while, but... It's worth it. Do you ever have to? Do you ever really have to press that home to people? Uh, it's it's hard because um, not everybody believes that. Oh, I need to learn structure because a lot of people say I just need to go hard, hammer through the, the the structure. You know, everything will break. I mean, to me, there's two parts to this. There is obviously the size difference in strength, right? But there's a technical ability. So let's say we are the same size, but my technical ability is better than yours then I'm definitely going to dominate this person. But however, maybe this person is a lot stronger and taller. Maybe your technical ability is like this much. You, they might dominate you. But when your technical ability is this, like maybe have a really good technical ability, regardless of size, size difference, you can still overcome the, you know, the, the strength. So and I think that really comes to me is when I start doing grappling. Like I'm, I'm, a, I'm a, on a smaller end because I'm like 145 pounds, 140, 145 pounds. I'm like smaller size. So when I first started doing jujitsu, the guys had 200 pounds. So they just smashed me every single day. And then when I started to realize I'm going to smash every day, I need to do something different. My instructor told me, because you're not applying your Wing Chun structure to jujitsu. And that's how I started going, okay, I'm doing something wrong because I'm just using pure strength against someone who's like three times my size. So when I look back, it's like, I wish I understand that earlier so I don't have to spend more time to say, okay, here's how I apply my structure. And here's how I do my Wing Chun stuff. When I start to hand fight with those guys, then I can say, oh, I really need to, need to apply my structure in the correct way so I can dominate. So now when I roll top people like 250 pounds, that's not a problem for me. So to me, it's like you have to go through that phase of understanding, wow, structure does good things for you. But of course, there are people like, I don't care about structure. I just believe in pure muscular strength. So when it comes to convincing people, 
I usually say, do a training with us, do a private lesson. We can talk about it. We can show you how to apply. Whether you believe or not, then we'll leave it up to you. When I look at your videos again, too, I know that you know how to apply stuff. Uh, the video with you and Jesse, um, the the karate versus Wing Chun, no. I said in a million, it, it, in my opinion, you were nice. You were just being nice. And if you had applied forward energy, there's literally, Jesse's a skilled he is a, yeah. I would, you couldn't pay yeah. me to take one of his punches or kicks. There's no way. So I'm not disrespecting him at all. But mm -hmm. as shorter men, we know the Wing Chun game lives in smothering and people just yeah. don't understand that, you know, if, if Kevin had just moved forward, it would have been game over. When you went to, thinking, yeah. go ahead. No, let's talk about that for a second. Give me a second. Hold on. Yeah. So what, yeah, we're, we're going to talk about Kevin. Uh, we got Kevin Lee here. This is going to be fantastic talking about all Wing Chun things here. Why, Sorry, I was going to say, while you got your earbuds off. off, while you got your earbuds off, I was going to give you accolades. Um, one of the things that I wanted to talk about was that offensive mindset, because yeah. bef before I started training with Phil mm -hmm. Nearing, who was my second Sifu, uh, Phil had met and, and befriended and completely fell in love with Carlson Gracie and Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Uh, Phil mm -hmm. came from Steve Lee Swift's Wing Chun, which was extremely aggressive uh, and fast, and it's where my lineage is as well, too. Um, uh, Justin Oxyfu, Justin Ock out of Florida, we are of the same uh, uh, lineage. And then Phil met Sam Kwok, and then they, uh, be Sao became such a they became the biggest part of the game. And we kind of mm -hmm. know how Chi Sao hurts Wing Chun. But then when he found Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, that changed his his mindset to apply it to Wing Chun by saying you have to be defensive first before you can attack. And I got my ass kicked all the time in class by being defensive against bigger guys and, and, and taller guys. Um, when you went to... Or, or I don't know which came first. Did, did grappling come first and then Wing Chun for you? Okay. Wing Chun. So how did you bring your Wing Chun into uh, uh, BJJ and ha has BJJ hurt or improved your Wing Chun? Because for Phil, I'm sorry, BJJ hurt Phil's delivery for Wing Chun because he taught his smaller students to defend first and then attack. And those of us who did got our asses kicked. What was your experience? So I think my Wing Chun helped my BJJ and tremendously. And I have to give credit to all my instructors. Um, my instructor, uh, Professor Pedro Sauer, he's like one of uh, the top top guys from the Gracie family. Uh, he's cons even though he's not a Gracie family re related, but he was considered part of the family umbrella. So, Professor actually studied Wing Chun in Utah. Mm. Uh, so, I was I remember I was still a blue belt in Jiu Jitsu, and I was just like, man, Professor, I struggle because I'm a, such a smaller guy, and I'm tiny. I'm a lot smaller back then. So I'm like, the guy puts him in a guard. I just, I can't break the guard. He goes, show me what you're doing. And I'm like, I'm just like, okay, I'm trying to push this guy back down with my, with my structure. He goes, yeah, my friend, there's no structure there. Um, so he showed me two things, and which today I'm still like, wow. He goes, you study Wing Chun. Where's your hip? I goes, I goes, what do you mean? I'm on the ground. I'm on my knees. He goes, your hip. He goes, you need to tilt your hip bone upwards and sink. And then angled just a little bit. And I'm like, what? Because I'm just doing this and pushing back down with my pure strength at that time. He goes, tell your hip bone. Like, you know, when Chen, we start doing the, uh, the sinking. Tuck your hips he under, said, yeah. Yeah, up your hips. He said, do that. He goes, and I go, really? He goes, yeah, just do that. And then put your hand, like you imagine you do like a gum sao. Like mm -hmm. you pin. But you just put up below the solar plexus. And I'll just sit right there, relax your body. And all of a sudden, the guy couldn't pull me forward. And I was like... Whoa, that's crazy. He goes, yeah, you do the same thing standing, you do the same thing on your knees. It's the same structure, just different positions. So that blew my mind right away. I was like, well, that's crazy. How do you know Wing Chun, Professor? He goes, oh, I had a student that studied Wing Chun for years and taught me this in Utah. And he goes, when people try to pull your collar, try to grab your neck, you cheese out with them. You cheese out, you pin the hand back down, then you can start past the guard because they're too worried about your hands and your body. The legs are easy to break apart. So that was like, wow, that's pure jiu-jitsu understanding of how Wing Chun should be. It's a structure applied in different scenario. Does our focus on Wing Chun, or Chi Sao and Wing Chun, 
Does that hurt us to get to the point where people will spend a few years, maybe only a couple of months, they, they only get to a certain point in Wing Chun. They think all Wing Chun is is Chi Sao. Then they'll go to BJJ and go, oh, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu is superior. I should have done this all the time. Are we hurting ourselves by becoming yeah. a Wing Chun, a Chi Sao school? I, I agree. I, I, might, I might get a lot of hate for this, but um, I, I'm i not criticizing Wing Chun. I think that, because um, I love Wing Chun, I think that the way that needs to be taught needs to be different. Like, at least for my understanding, Sifu does, we still do Chi Sao. We still do drills. We still, we still have that traditional aspect of Wing Chun training. But when it comes to applications, see if it goes, we need to apply in different scenarios, not just because no one's going to fight you like this. Why are you spending 10 years just training like this when someone might be punching you, elbow you, hip by you? There's no understanding of how you move your body in the real fight scenario. So what Sifu does, I'm going to show you, we're going to do different type of training. We'll do Chi Sao. They would grapple. They would go back chi sao and now look at the positions and we try to apply the same energy and same principle into grappling maybe elbow your your close shot punches like hooks and uppercuts and maybe elbows like we play elbow chi sao all the time with chi sao and i'm gonna try to insert my elbow this way this way this way and now you have to stick and be able to deflect and then be able to pummel elbow back and push back and that's a way that we play in our chi sao classes what has been your second favorite? What do you, you, with all the arts that you're on there, what, what do you, what else do you love? Oh, you? I love either probably Muay Thai or Jiu Jitsu. All right. I got to hear. Well, so why, why do you love them? What, 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 so, uh, what, so I can see the connection with Jiu Jitsu because there's a flow there. And as a, as a grappler, you know, I, I do miss that, but Muay Thai, why, come on. What, why, why do you love it so much? Uh, I'm a, I'm obviously uh, I'm not I'm not great in boxing. I love kicking. That's one of my background because being a taekwondo guy back then was kicking, right? So I love kicking. I like to strike and kick. What really brought me to Muay Thai recently because I traveled to Thailand twice and I trained Muay Thai very specifically. I love clinching. I I discovered that because the love of Wing Chun. Mm. My uh, my clinch instructor. This is crazy. Uh, the way he taught me, just like how Sifu teach me Wing Chun. Uh, so when I was in Thailand, this guy named um, Patch Munchu, he's like probably the, one of the greatest clinch fighter of all time. He won like 14 stadium fights, uh, sta- uh, world title, purely just understanding how to use clinch. So the way he showed me clinch, he goes, all right, Kevin, we're going to practice clinch. Okay, here's what you're going to do. Put your hand like this. And I'm like, like this? He goes, yeah. Out. yeah. <laughs> Put it on my bicep. Don't let me grab your neck. So I'm like, oh, just like Chisa. He goes, I don't know what that means, but yes, don't let me grab your neck. Don't let me elbow you. Don't let me come inside. So I'm like, all of a sudden I find myself, I'm doing Chisa this whole entire time. He goes, stick to me, stick to me, stick to me. Now when I go back, stick, then you have elbow. So now I'm like, whoa, this is just like Wing Chun. So I basically study like an hour of private lesson, just doing Wing Chun, but in a different format. But the way he breaks it down is very, very good. I love the way he uses, uh, he doesn't call it Hyun Sao, obviously. He doesn't mm-hmm. call it like different Wing Chun. He says, so you hand to the outside, you pat it down, then your elbow. You move your hand to the inside, then your elbow. There's a lot of Wing Chun, like even Bong Sao. He goes, when they grab your neck, put your hand like this on top of their arm. When they move, your elbow can strike. So I'm like, there's a whole bunch of Wing Chun technique in there. So I love, I love grappling. And that's the way I love Muay Thai is because the honest and the principle of Wing Chun really connects to everything that I study. The application of elbow energy. I every other art they talk their their intent is in their hands. I can even picture when I wrestled, my intent was in their hands. I've said a million times, if I knew Wing Chun when I was a wrestler, I would have been a four time state champion because of the power of elbow energy. Is just your it stops everything. It pulls. It pushes harder. It stops. Do you think that you have an advantage or you're able to quickly pick up arts more because of that elbow understanding? Uh, or have people mm-hmm. ever said, holy cow, dude, why are you so difficult to deal with? And you've been yeah. aware oh, it's because I could hook my elbows up to my hips. Yeah. I, uh, I have big guys ask me, he's like, dude, you're stronger than you think. And you're stronger than you look. Cause I'm a smaller guy. He goes, what are you doing differently? I said, elbow. I don't think hand. I think everything comes from my elbow. When I do jujitsu, I don't frame with my hand. I frame with my elbow. And sometimes I frame with my forearm, but I don't use ever use my hand. I don't think my hand because this is too far away from my structure. 
this is a lot better because it's shorter. So when I start doing grappling, uh, even just doing, even doing strikes, I punch not from the hand. I punch from the elbows and the hip. It's all about elbow and hip connection. When I do my jab and cross, same way. But not hand, punch. It's elbow. And I project everything forward, just like how Wing Chun teaches. I'm so glad you did this podcast, too, because it just it shows. People don't get to see or hear this side of your knowledge on YouTube because you're so busy putting up other content. But this, mm-hmm. you, it, it, this proves it. I saw it. I watched how you moved. I watched how you move with with uh, with Sifu Fong moving you, and I went, "Oh my God, these guys know exactly what they're talking about." And you're talking about it now. Um, give us w- talk about like where your training is headed. What are you What are you focusing on now? What are you passionate about? Uh, and then I want to ask about your teaching too. But what are you What are you focusing mm-hmm. on now? So right now, uh, I'm for talking about for my personal. Yeah, you. What are you What are you in love with now? What like, so where Where you're at now with your game and teaching? What is your passion? Because you can't be a, a martial artist that stays with an art for as long as they have and not. And if you're bored, you're bored. But the, the, the love for it means you're rediscovering something or you're on a journey. Where are you at now in your journey? Uh, right now, I'm exploring different arts. And if you look at my, my videos on YouTube, I'm doing the same thing. I'm trying to look into different traditional martial arts. It doesn't matter if it's Kung Fu. Western, Eastern martial arts, I'm trying to find the connection into Wen Chun because I recently did a video with uh, Xin Yi, which is an older Chinese form. The way that how they do the energy projection is very like Wen Chun, just a different to use it. So I'm trying to see, oh, there's a thing I can learn from that system, the thing I can learn from this system, how can I bring it back and apply the same same thing into my Wen Chun game? At the same time, I, I love to apply the same principle in two different martial arts that I study. So I'm trying to find a balance. Maybe there's something I haven't learned. Maybe somebody has a better, better way to describe things. Because to to me, Sifu 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 is great at at teaching, but there is a language barrier sometimes. So he might say the same thing four different ways, but most of the students goes, "Man, he's saying different things." I'm like, "No, no, no. He's saying the same thing, but in four different ways because." He might describe this this energy in like the elbow energy, for example. All right, think about your elbow. And then some people get it, some people don't get it. So he'll he'll do another exercise that's related to elbow. And people will think that, oh, he's showing something else. I'm like, no, he's still doing the same thing. He's just trying to show you the path with so going the same direction, but different way to get there. So for me at this stage, I'm trying to figure out what can I do to better myself? Like understanding Wing Chun, but how can I use different training method to make my Wing Chun better, if that makes sense. That's fantastic because most people take the Wing Chun to make their other arts better. And I'm I, I, it, I'm so pleased because, I'm sorry, we need guys like you that are going to take us into the next generation of Wing Chun. Mm-hmm. I mean, people are going to be looking at you 20, 30 years from now, and they're going to be looking to you for this is the epitome of what Wing Chun is. And if you're going to be sticking with it, that gives me a ton of hope. Um, talk to me about uh, uh, teaching. What has been some memorable moments that you've taught and it, it has made you learn more? Because a lot of people don't understand that you, when you really start to teach, that's when you really start to learn because you yeah. have to understand it and to be able to uh, incor- incorporate it or uh, pass it on to somebody else. Talk about some uh, rewarding moments where you've been really just uh, like you've discovered uh, anything about yourself during teaching. Uh, I started teaching. Oh, actually, my people asked me to teach when I started going to college. Cause when I, when I go to, when I went to college and at that time he goes, Kevin, don't, don't stop training. I'm like, Sifu, but I'm going to be so far away from the academy. I'm like an hour and a half away. Cause I went to school at UGA, which is like an hour and a away from our academy. He goes, why don't you start teaching? I'm like, but Sifu, I'm only like a, a green belt at that time. He goes, doesn't matter. Start teaching. And he was the one who really encouraged me to teach because he said, you can't learn from like watching all the time. Well, you can't learn from doing this all the time. Sometimes when you teach, it forces you to think something, like think from a different perspective. And that also forces you to have to do the technique better because now you're teaching. So I started teaching when I was 19, 19, 20 at the, at the university that I attended. So I started four years of program with UGA. I did interview with them. They go, okay, show me what you can teach. So I did a demonstration. I go into the interview with the older counselors, like the counselors and stuff like that. 
and then by the time the second semester comes in, they go, okay, Kevin, you get, you get to have two Wing Chun classes a week at UGA. And I was like, to me, that was a big deal. I was like, dude, I'm technically a, a faculty member at the university that I, I go to. So I taught four years of Wing Chun over there. And I think one of the best moments that I ever taught, or well, to me, is it made my structure way better. Because I'm always like, yeah, you got to do this. But then, of course, as a college kid, they like to mess around. Say, mm. What if I do this? What if I do this? So I learned how to counter different surprise moments because you're not going to get disciplined student like how we get from the, from the academy. Because at school, everybody's kind of expected to learn and on a certain better behavior. But at college, it's different because we're all, we all the same age. So the students are looking at you like, oh, you may be like two years younger than me or maybe just a little older than me. What makes you better than me? So now they'll start to like kind of mess around with you, try to like test you a little bit during class time. So you really have to put yourself down and say, hey, I know what I'm doing. So that forced me to get better. So that's when I started to realize structure overcomes strength if you're in applying the right way. And a constant just kind of test things out during the class time. So now it's like, hey, my shoulder needs to be here versus raising up. Because I caught myself doing bad habits all the time during that time period. So I fix a lot of different parts of my structure and the reinforcement of my energy. Um, and one thing that struck me is when Sipa taught me how to do a tonsil right. You know, at that time I was doing tonsil like this. He's like, Kevin, there's no connection. I'm like, Sipa, there's connection. He goes, no, 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 no. So he grabbed, he grabbed a penny, like a, like a penny, and you put it right here. And he said, Kevin, focus on the penny. Just pinch this. The rest of the four fingers relax. But you have a penny right here. Do all your drill with this. So now I'm like, whoa, I'm a lot stronger. He goes, yeah. Because now this manure and points connected all the way to the elbow. Don't focus on this. Don't focus just on this. You got to think about the connection here. So that penny really blew my mind. Isn't so it amazing? I, I, it blows yeah. me away. The smallest things out there, you're like, oh, my gosh. Yeah. You you got lucky. You had a teacher. I got really lucky. Well, we, and, and what's nice to see is that you're – you're going to repeat what you were taught, which is mm -hmm. not the concept of guarding the rice bowl. That's something that so many Sifus did. You're telling me your Sifu encouraged you to teach. I didn't get yep. that until I came into with uh, Sifu Syed. And it was, I, I had already been doing Wing Chun for 10 years. And then finally, when I started training under Syed, he was like, yeah, teach. I'm like, wait, what? Yeah. What, what? You give me permission? So yeah. it blows me away that your teacher acknowledged that for you to advance in your learning, you had to teach. And he wasn't afraid of you getting better than him or anything like that. That's so rare. Have you seen that mm -hmm. in other martial arts cultures or anything else? No, I think Sifu is probably the only person that I've seen. Because even when I was in Thailand study, they go, you have to get your certification before you actually teach. But Sifu, to me, he's like a father to me. He's always like, encouraged me to do things that would benefit me. He said, like, do it, Kevin. Do Savat do different martial arts because they can only help you better. But when you get better, you got to think about your, the concept that you bring to your body, not just think about the technique, really think about what, what it does for you. So to me, Sifu's always been my mentor. Um, and I wouldn't be where I am without the way he guides me because he Sifu did tell me like back in the days, you can't do this. You know, you're supposed to follow the same path until, until the instructor say, okay, you're allowed to teach. Then you teach. Otherwise you're a student. I want to talk. Uh, I always say, like, I always like taking the last few parts of uh, uh, of the interview to what can we improve on. Um, number one, it's Kevin Lee, uh, Kevin Lee vlog over on uh, YouTube. If uh, you, everyone should subscribe to this, you see uh, an unbelievable wealth of martial arts knowledge, not just Wing Chun. And Kevin collaborates with some incredible guys out there as well. And then the Francis Fong Academy is francisfongacademy.com. Um, if you're in the opportunity in the area, you have it, I would 100% check this school out. I would absolutely uh, uh, attend a seminar. Uh, I've been training Wing Chun since 1996. And when I see... Uh, what Kevin uh, and 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 Sifu Fong are putting out there, a hundred percent gets my endorsement. So make sure you subscribe to YouTube channel, uh, Kevin's YouTube channel, and check out uh, Francis Fong's um, academy. What do you see? I want to take it as, as a as a whole, like a, a general sense, and then a narrow sense. What do mm -hmm. you want to see for the improvement of martial arts? Um, 
in the future, meaning it's all MMA, all MMA, all MMA right now. Do you see an opportunity to make, uh, make, <laughs> this sounds stupid, make martial arts great again? Do you see an yes. opportunity to make traditional martial arts great again? Yeah, uh, you actually, uh, that's actually my goal for this year. Uh, I'm on a path right now. I'm digging, researching all the traditional martial arts because I believe, and the way that Steve would tell me is like some things like, there, in the history, we lost so much translation because the teacher holds back from teaching. You have maybe one great teacher. He might show five students different things depending on the generation time. He might show the student on first generation 80%. Then it goes down to 60, 40, he got lazy, so maybe he doesn't want to teach as much. So now the information gets diluted. So I feel like there are principles that are still valuable to what we're learning today. So I'm actually on a path of digging some of a traditional martial artist that still teach the same value how we approach things. And that's what I'm gonna research him for. Like I met up with this uh, Xingyi guy. He's, he showed me the way Xingyi could be or should be in a com combative situation. I'm like, whoa, that's so different from what I've seen on YouTube. He goes, yeah, I don't, I don't know what the YouTube guys are doing because they're just showing forms. And he's really showing me the way how they explode that power and use them for strikes. And he said that that's how Xingyi should be. So I'm like, hey, that kind of clicks what I'm going with with my future. It's like, I want to bring those like, uh, like technical technical guys that gets buried and then bring them up and say, hey, there are guys that's really good. The Kung Fu's are really good. But unfortunately, what you see on a regular basis, they maybe just don't understand what they're doing. Do you think so you, that's a path. Do you think YouTube has hurt us because how many times have we heard or you don't see anybody sparring. Your your martial arts not good unless you're sparring. It's like that's all people want to see today is the tag I got you game and sparring. Um yeah. with Wing Chun moving forward, if you could if you had the staff of power and you could everyone said, Kevin, all right, you're Grandmaster Kevin Lee, you're gonna you're gonna set the standard for Wing Chun. What are some of the misconceptions or problem trainings that we do, what would you do to correct whatever perceptive problem the world has on Wing Chun so that we could be taken seriously instead of having a bunch of Ip Man movies out there that actually do more hurt <laughs> than good? Uh, my, my belief, and this is, I think that's coming from my teachers as well, never box yourself into one thing that you truly believe is right. Just because it was taught this way, you got to research, you got to experiment, you got you to gotta do whole bunch of different things before you finally say, okay, this is what it works for me. Because what works for you may not work for me, right? So what I what what I want to do is not just understand the principle of Wing Chun, but you really try to apply in every aspect. Can the MMA guys do Wing Chun? Absolutely. Can the Jiu Jitsu guy do Wing Chun? Absolutely. Here are the ways you can apply. Here's all ways Wing Chun can help you. But if you just have an MMA guy going to a very traditional school, just learning cheese out for 10 years, I don't think that would benefit them if there's no application or uh, understanding how things are translating. And that's, to me, that's like, I wish you could have done better because I feel like there's this connection between training and reality. So now you've seen all this Wing Chun Master getting beat up. Oh man, this guy just getting beat up by the MMA guy. I'm just like, I don't know how much, how much training he's done. If you have, I think every Wing Chun person should do at least one or two different arts to really understand, okay, this is their game. Not necessarily you have to be a master in that the different arts, but bring that uh, knowledge to you so that way you can make your winter better. I, and that's to me, it's like, don't box yourself in just things that you were taught, but branch out and learn and bring it back to your core. Do you, how did, how did you, how did you get to, to collaborate with other guys like uh, Jesse and Mike, how did that happen where everybody was so like your core group of guys, all of you guys are the, the type A personality. You could tell like Mike, I can relate to Mike cause he's a former cop too. So we've mm -hmm. got that arrogance to us. I get that. I, I like him. I like him for that. Uh, he's also got short man's disease like I do. Um, how how did that just work? You guys all seem to, you've got a JKD guy there. You've got Mike, you've got Jesse. You guys just beautifully work together. Was that a hard thing to create or did that environment just manifest itself? I think, I think it just kind of came along like that because I got introduced to the group by Sensei Seth. I met him a couple years ago when I was getting my black belts in North Carolina. So I met up with him. He goes, hey, Kevin, I'm interested in Wen Chun. Show me. 
So I did a one-time video with him and he was like, whoa, this is different than what I expected. And then later on, he introduced me to IC Mike. He's a guy who brought me to uh, Stephen Thompson, Wonder Boy. Uh, he kind of like kind of branched my world in, in, in YouTube. And I'm really thankful for what, what he did to me, like what he did for me. Uh, later on, I met Jeff Chen. I met um, other YouTubers and I'm able to collaborate with them. And then that kind of opened my world. It's like, wow, I could do so much more if I just bring those information to me and really trying to understanding what each art can do for you and the concept of Wing Chun. I, I'm looking forward to this. I think that you're you're the future of Wing Chun. There's no question about that because oh, people, well, oh, Kevin, people have to understand that YouTube isn't going to go away. And mm -hmm. sadly, anybody and their mother can put pick up a uh, a, a video camera, a, a, a iPhone, film a video, and if they have like Master Wong is the prime example. If Master Wong didn't know what he was talking about, and you saw his content from a traditional. Uh, oh, I don't know if I could say traditional Wing Chun without William Chung suing me. Um, <laughs> a, a conventional Wing Chun stance, you would look and go, well, that's got Wing Chun elements in there, but it's really not Wing Chun. But mm -hmm. but other, but millions of other people would say this is Wing Chun. But then when you start to talk to Master Wong, you're like, oh, no, this guy 100% knows what he's doing, but he's choosing to put these pieces up there. That makes sense. Yeah. I yeah. think that YouTube's here to stay. Um we need people like you and you need people. We need to endorse you because I think that you have, you have a good future for saving our art. Unlike the intent behind the Ip Man movies. Yeah, they were great, but they really had a really bad expectation for it. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm hoping that you've got a great future. You continue to do this. Uh, we want to support your channel, Kevin Lee, uh, vlog going to explore different martial arts out there. It's great. Uh, anything you want to close with? Um, yeah, give us some words of wisdom. Something that you're, <laughs> you know, you're, come on, you got you got analysis with something. What do you, what are your what are your closing thoughts? Uh, I don't have a great wisdom, but I do want to say uh, I appreciate to every one of my followers, and I really appreciate what my instructor has done for me because I I always give credit to him because without him I wouldn't be the way I am. Because to me, it's the the person that brought you into the door. And Sif is always there being super helpful and guide for like a good teacher knows how to guide. A good teacher knows how to coach. And that's how Sifa taught me is that you can't just teach people because you gotta guide them, you gotta coach them, then you have a good environment. And that's what he taught me. So I wanna do a same thing to the students at, at the academy. It's like, I don't want just to teach you guys the technique. I wanna show you guys this is what Sifa has done for me. I wanna bring it to you guys as well. And same thing to my followers on YouTube is like, I want to not just show you the path. I want to bring the best of people that really can understand what they're doing and, and basically educate. Okay, traditional martial arts could work, but it really take time to train and understand. You can't just go, I'm going to learn the form, then I master the form, I'm going to go fight. That's not how it works. No, I think your teacher did a great job because you're doing it. You're you're repeating. You're a fantastic representative and ambassador of not just Wing Chun, but martial arts. So, uh, man, I, I've been waiting to have you on for a long time. Everybody's been asking me, when am I going to have Kevin Lee on? Got it on there. Uh, <laughs> Sifu Kevin Lee, thank you for your time. We look forward to supporting I, you. I do have to say, though, when I started learning Wing Chun at first, I used to watch your China all the time. All right, so here's my question, because I'll let you have it. How full of shit am I, or how legitimate am I? Do you, do you ever, and, and I'm, I welcome the criticism. How much of my no, stuff no. do you disagree with or agree with or align with? I, I love the way you teach, and I love your personality. And it was like, I remember because you left for a while, because back then you were um, you were still big, like you're still buff, mm -hmm. but you left for a while, and you got bigger. And I was like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got, I started when I channel, I started, I was 165. And, uh, oh, wow. Yeah. Then I, I lifted more weights and then, uh, I came back. I'm 235 pounds. I'm five, seven. I'm, I'm thick. I power lift cause I love lifting heavy weights. I love that's to crazy. eat as well too. So that's why I said, you know, you and I square off. All you have to do is last five seconds. Kevin, <laughs> let me swing three times in the air. I'm done. I'm done. I have no cardio whatsoever. So Kevin Lee gets the win on this one. Um, thank you. Thank you so Thank much. You, Guys, I hope you enjoyed this. Share this. Comment below. Uh, what you, If you have any questions for Kevin, I'm sure he'll read this. Go to his content. Support it. Like it. Subscribe to Kevin Lee Vlog channel. Check out the Francis Fong Academy as well, dot com as well, too. And, guys, we'll see you on the next episode of Them's Fighting Words. Thank you, sir. Thank you.